Hello, everybody. Welcome to a very special episode of the Life Sucks podcast uh, with my host. Don't say shit. OK, uh, I'm going to start a new thing where we have a, a guest. Just don't talk. OK, OK. I just told you not to talk. I'm so sorry. Stop talking. All right, guys, I'm going to start that over because he don't listen. So welcome to Life Sucks podcast. The first guest is my friend over here, my boss. I'll be saying a lot of nice things about him because I'm looking for a race. Uh, Admiral Black. You're off to a great start. You could talk. Telling me to uh, not talk. That's definitely going to get you a race right there. Yeah. Uh, anyways, this is my show. You're in my domain. I know in Game of Honor, you're used to... Don't, don't do this. I don't, I don't do that. I don't sound like that. You're in my show now. Okay. You're in my world. Well, I have listened. I can hit you. I can assault you. I could, honestly, I could kill you. And it's legal in this booth. But it's not because you're recording it online so people will see you we'll see about assaulting that. me I, I think you'll probably catch a charge for that we'll see about that but i have seen this podcast i've seen you and skulls come okay. through what do you uh, think what do you think it's not bad is it not the best podcast that you have ever heard of mm, i mean there's impulsive they're, they're pretty good that's a pretty good podcast but you know you're, you're not bad though you're, you're not bad you're pretty funny we so. can't com- we can't compete with impulsive so <laughs> uh guys this is a video podcast of course uh this Certain episode, every five episodes is going to be a video podcast. So you audio audio listeners still get the podcast. But if you come over to YouTube, YouTube.com <laughs> slash Princeton Digital Media. So you guys can actually watch the podcast rather than just listen to it. But uh, let's jump right into it. Uh, Axel had asked if we had any stories about teachers that hated us. Oh, okay. Uh, I have one. Yeah, I know. You bring it up all the time in Game of Honor. Uh, I br- <laughs> you do. You, you've you brought up your teachers multiple times yes, because, in multiple shows. Yes, because they constantly told me when I was going to school that I was going to grow up to be a failure. And then I proved them wrong because, look, guys, I have my own podcast. I've been a champion two times in Game of Honor show. That's true. You have. So jokes on them. I bet they're still teaching at a shitty high school. But anyways, uh, I have a story. Uh, So my mom had a friend. And her, this was my mom's best friend for the longest time. And she'll always come over. But she was dating my math teacher. Okay. Right? She was dating my math teacher. My mom's friend was dating my math teacher. And I will always hear about their sex life, which is something you don't want to hear about your teacher. No. Uh, no. Their relationship problems. You'll hear about, like, you know, when they got in an argument, I'll be like, oh, yeah. You know, like, let's say his name was Josh. It'd be like, oh, Josh, you're a piece of shit. Yeah, he a piece of shit. That's what he is. So, like, you're hearing these things about a teacher, right? I'm, like, probably, without exaggeration, I think I'm, like, 14, maybe 15. So, this is, this is high school? This is high school. This was oh, my okay. freshman year of high school. Uh, I was dating, uh, or not dating, sorry. My mom, so, my mom's best friend was dating my math teacher at the time. And it was awkward because I will hear about how much of a piece of shit this guy was. You know, like, I will hear all these sex stories that I... I shouldn't be hearing because, you know. Things you don't really want to know about your teacher, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, there's a there's a line, a perpetual line that was crossed that should have never been crossed, right? Me, how would you describe me when I was a teenager? Bad. You like were it, bad. What, what, uh, like, you were an instigator. Yeah, uh, was, yeah, You constantly went out of your way to mess with people. You were a bully. Princeton was a bully when he was a, when he was a child. That's, that's the best way to describe it. You, you were just a absolute bully. You preyed on the weak. <laughs> oh, I just say it like that. You were a predator. That's what you were. So, uh, I was at school one day, and uh, Mr. Thomas was like, oh, uh, Princeton, you know, you're great. So, he was reading people's grades out loud, and he got to me. He goes, no, he was doing roll call, right? And I did the thing where you put a fake name. You know, like, uh, his system was down. And he had doing roll call, and he's using a piece of paper that everybody put their name on, uh, because like uh, we had a really big class. And he goes, you know, he's reading through the names, and of course I did the generic bend over, and he's like, ha ha. He instantly knew who it was. So, ha ha, Princeton. Ha ha. Even though I wrote my name like somewhere else, <laughs> and I even fixed my handwriting because I'm left handed, but I wrote with my left hand to make it. He knew it was me. You know why? Because you were probably the baddest kid in the class. So uh, I'm in class, and he reads the bend over, and he's, wow, John, you're very creative, Princeton. Wow, you really killed it with this joke, right? That's basically what he said, right? And he's like, uh, and then he looks over on my grade that's on the same piece of paper, or a different piece of paper, and he goes like this. 
you know, John, I don't see a scenario until in which uh you can get your grade up. And like when no <laughs> oh I did not I did not skip a beat. I said, Oh well, Mr. Thomas. Or I was like, huh, I guess we both have something we can't get up, huh, Mr. Thomas? And like, bro, because he had erectile dysfunction. <laughs> and I knew this because of my mom's friend that like they will go to have sex and like my mom's friend was like a fucking bombshell, like a total milk, right? Uh-huh. Uh and like he couldn't get it up. And I heard about this all the time. That's actually what destroyed our friendship is that he'll go to pipe it up, but it won't pipe up. You know, it'll just sit there like a fucking balloon, like a deflated <laughs> balloon. <laughs> you know, when you buy those. That's books? savage. Why did you put his business out? He like put that? mine. He put mine. But who does that? He did. He just, he just told the whole class that I'm failing. Yes. But I, I think that like. Well, not grab me, put me aside. I was like, hey, John, you're failing. He didn't have to do it in front of everybody. I feel like you went a lot harder than he did. Though. I don't know. I, I really do. All I know is that I was like, well, Mr. Thomas, I guess we both have something we can't get up, huh? And like his eyes got really big and he was fucking mad, right? <laughs> and all the kids in class were like, oh. You know how high school is, too. I bet they start calling him like. Softy. <laughs> <laughs> they used to call him Mr. Softy. And uh, they call him Mr. Softy for a while. Uh, if you actually called him Mr. Softy, you got like in house suspension. Um, and if you kept it out, he got suspended. <laughs> if you call him Mr. Softy. Uh, ultimately, what ended up happening that day was I felt like a god. I'm walking around school like, yeah, I'm a fucking god. Like, I know you haven't watched JoJo, but there's a character named Deal that has fucking swag and sauce for days. I was walking, I'm like, yeah, I fucking want that little punk ass bitch, right? Um, I went home, and my mom's sitting like this. Hands like this. And I'm thinking, like, Oh, that's weird. My mom never said, she never goes, bro, she's talking about my hair like this. She went, Ugh! it fucking hit me. She beat my ass, made me apologize to him in class. So uh, so you came the next day beat up? No, no, uh, it was a Friday that I did this to him. I had to come in Friday or uh, Monday, and he already knew that I had to apologize in front of everybody. So I was mad, and then, like, he made a comment, and, like, he doesn't know anything about me, by the way. Uh, he just made a comment and he's like, uh, he made a comment about my dad and like, I'm not close to my dad at all, but it's the fact that he like tried to attack me. Yeah. He tried to trigger you. So like I written this entire thing that my mom looked over and it's like, okay, I want you to read this word for word. But he, he attacked me before I had to read the apology. And I was like, I did the thing where I was like, and like, I said, fuck, I'm going to improvise this. And, uh, I got kicked out from his class. Uh, afterward, it, was basically, it basically started with, Dear Mr. Softy. And he's like, Get out! Get out! <laughs> and then I started reading the, the note. And he's like, Out! Get out! He wouldn't let me, like, talk. He kept running. So I, <laughs> he kept, like, trying to kick me out and, like, yelling. But I kept reading over it. And I was like, Eric, tell the... And I basically... You add it to the list? I added... not No, no. I, I didn't add to the list. I basically explained to people what erectile dysfunction is and how it's very common with men. <laughs> and like and like basically like the whole class is laughing. I actually got kicked out from his class. Um I ended up getting switched to another teacher who was like better than him. Like a better teacher? Yeah, or... like he was cool. Like he was like oh. he was the cool teacher who added me on Xbox 360 and we would play Halo. Oh, okay. Yeah, you I... so he learned. He learned to make friends with the student. Yeah. Rather than put himself as an enemy. Yeah, yeah, uh, I don't want to say his name uh because he was a cool teacher. Uh honestly, I didn't even he just gave us A's. Like, the, this other teacher, he just gave us A's. Uh, I remember once that uh, we were playing Halo, and he literally said, yeah, if you beat me, I'm going to fill your ass in class. Let's go. I'm like, what? Because we were in an Xbox party. <laughs> and, like, he literally threatened me that if I beat him and I fuck up his, his streak, that he would fucking ban me. <laughs> or he'll fucking uh, give me a bad grade. Did you lose? No. Nah. did you beat him? Nah, bro. That grade ain't, ain't as important as the bragging rights. You know that. <laughs> but overall... um. The second teacher, I don't want to say his name, uh, but he was probably one of the best influences I ever had in my life. He was like a cool, down-to-earth teacher. He knew that as teenagers, like, he knew how to deal with teenagers instead of, like, because with a teenager, you never want to confront a teenager because when a teenager is backed up, yeah, they they're, they're cats. Yeah, they get aggressive. But It's best to build a good relationship. Like, you have to approach them in a certain way. You have to have a lot of patience to deal with kids. Yeah, And that's just, like, kids in general. That's not even just teenagers. It's just teenagers think they know everything. So you definitely have to have patience because they don't listen. They don't listen. Yeah. They think they know everything, you know. 
You ever had any any experiences with teachers? So experiences with teachers actually have not because I was always the kid in school who was what? Good, quiet. Hey buddy. So you're the school shooter? No. <laughs> it's definitely not. I was I was very like um quiet in class. I never really started problems. Uh, I never gave my teachers a hard time. So if they asked me to do something, I just did it. Uh, so I, I never had a run-in with a teacher at school. There's never been a teacher that, like, just didn't like me. Okay. Yeah. At least, yeah. At least up until high school. Oh, and in high school, did you have problems with teachers? No, 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 no. no that's what I'm saying. Like, from my oh, grade, I see grade school. Yeah. yeah. I never had, I never had a, a problem, really a problem with a teacher. Okay. I had a lot. Yeah. Like, from my freshman year to my senior year, I had a lot of problems. But it's because I don't like authority. And I'm very defiant. Like, I don't like being told no for no reason. Like, if you say, hey, John, don't cross the street because cars go really fast and you can get hit. But if you say, John, don't cross the street, I'm like, why? See, like, I never had that issue in terms of listening because I always... I'm sorry, did you just pull out a watermelon? I'm hungry, bro. <laughs> Yo, the... Okay, for you audio listeners here, this guy just pulled out a watermelon from his desk, and he's eating that. It'll put me on blast, my own pocket. Bro, tell the story. Uh, okay, all right. I So I never had a problem with the teachers themselves. Um, I was, one, if they asked me to do something, I always just did it. Uh, I was I was definitely one of those kids. Pussy would. If that's what you want to call it. I paid attention in class, kind of-ish. Paid attention in class till high school. And then I just drew Pokemon all the time. He did. Desk. I got really good at it. I started selling them for a dollar. This dude will come to my house with a paper that says homework on it. And in the back of it, there'll be like a hyper-realistic Charizard. <laughs> yeah. I drew so many Pokemon. I literally drew so many that we were almost able to complete the decks and put it on uh, Princeton's my wall. wall when we were kids. Yeah, if you guys watch my old YouTube channel. Mm-hmm. So, like, Actually, I know no, that. I have, I have a video on my old YouTube. So I know that people didn't like that aspect. Uh, teachers didn't like that aspect when I got into high school. They gave yeah. me a lot of problems with that. Um, but run-ins with teachers themselves, not really. Uh, I basically just did what they asked me to. Like I went to school just to go to school. Pussy know? whip. <laughs> <laughs> now students, I, I had some problems with students. Did you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you want to tell a story about the salad that you ate? The salad? Yeah, remember. Were you sure a fork with somebody else? Yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite story in the world. <laughs> so I was in middle school, all right? This was uh, seventh or eighth grade. Holy shit. This was in middle school? Yeah, this was that in That early? School. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it was bad. So I was in middle school, and um, there was this, my friend. I considered them a friend at a time. Uh, we had lunch together, and I got a salad, and I didn't grab a fork or anything, right? And she's like, oh, you can use mine. I was like, oh, thank you. So I'm sitting there eating. I'm eating with my salad. And then I look up, and her and her boyfriend next to her are just, like, snickering, just laughing. And I'm like, I'm looking around like, what's so funny? Is is there something in my salad? Like, what's so funny? And then her boyfriend's like, like, uh, I'm just going to call her uh, Stephanie. Stephanie. Her boyfriend was like, yeah, Stephanie just gave me head in the parking lot before this and they're laughing and i was so mad in middle school in middle school yeah i was so mad because i'm like i i trusted you, <laughs> and you i believed this, in you you gave, and, you gave me this this tainted fork <laughs> <laughs> that's what i call it i call it the tainted fork because i was mad i was like how are you gonna give me your utensil because it wasn't a new one like she had she was eating she eating her lunch she'd already ate and then she's like yeah you're here you can use mine and the worst part is that they knew what they were doing because they were laughing about it. Would you say the food tasted saltier? <laughs> I don't recall, but I do know that I was mad. Like, did you if finish I... eating? No, no, I didn't finish eating. I got up. But you already ate. You I already got started. up and left. Yeah, I started. I left. That's stupid. You I finished. went home. I went and go. I went and sat with this kid. There was a kid. They called him. Um, they call him Growlithe. Oh, they're uh, gonna say Lightning McQueen. No, they call him Growlithe. This was middle school. Lightning uh, McQueen was in high. Okay. So they call him Growlithe. He's a kid. He always sat by himself and he growled at people. <laughs> so I went and sat with him. I'm like, hey, man, can I sit with you? And like, he gave me like this dead stare, but he didn't say no. And I was so bad that I took the chance and I sat there and I ate lunch with him. I gave him my cookie. 
It was the most quiet, awkward lunch I ever had in my life. With no fork? <laughs> yeah, I didn't have a fork. I was like, I was done. I was done. I was so mad at her. I was mad at her boyfriend because I was friends with them both. That's super disrespectful. Yeah, I was like, I was like, that's so disrespectful. I told him off too. No, that's that's very disrespectful. I would never do that. I think that's like, like I do a lot. Like I fuck with people a lot, but I don't think that's crossing a line. That... Yeah, but it was middle school. And you know how middle schoolers are. They're bro, savages. I, I never got fucking head as a middle schooler. Like, yeah, that kid did. <laughs> bro, that did. He did. So you think that girl's pregnant? Uh, probably. Probably. I'll have to look her up. I have to look. We'll look her up after the podcast. You should. <laughs> we should. <laughs> we'll uh, we'll look her up and see. Uh, it was it was pretty bad. That whole friend group was kind of bad. I don't I don't talk to them anymore. Uh, so yeah. I I did that a lot in high school where like I had different friend groups. Oh, they're gonna say that you ate after people spoon that. <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> no, I hung out with a lot of different groups in high school. I never was like a part of just one clique. Yeah. So like I'd make one friend, and like they'd invite me to their group, and then I'd slowly make friends with the other people. But it's like. I was very out of place because these were like scene kids. And then you have me who dressed like a black boy that wore like white, white people clothes. Yeah. And like, I look very out of place. You yeah, know you what did. I mean? Yeah, you did. I look very out of place. You were literally. I walked around with polos. And... You were, you were every white person group, like every white groups, like token black guy friend. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I actually think that is a hundred percent accurate. That's probably the better way to describe it. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I never had a run in with, uh, with. Teachers, yeah, but I had I had some problems with kids. I had a uh, this is story. You suggested I told the story to uh, the kid named Jalen. Uh, no, no, so, they, you have you heard about that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is a story you suggested I told in the podcast, and also uh, the Jimmy John story. Oh yeah, you still haven't told that yet? No, I have. I've never told that story. Oh. Um, so basically, uh, this is when I still lived in Florida, fresh out of high school. Um, oh no, no, I think. I was either in high school or fresh out of high school. Uh, and No, it was fresh out of high school, yeah. So, I was dating this girl. Let's give her the name. Uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll say Emily, right? We'll give her the name Emily. Uh, I was dating this girl named Emily, but her parents didn't like me, right? Okay, her dad didn't <laughs> like me. Her dad's like, I know that kid. He just bounces from girl to girl. Uh, he's just gonna do you and skedaddle, and I was like, "Bitch!" But that's exactly what you wanted to do, right? Yeah. Okay. But I did stay with her longer. I think she was my longest relationship. I mean, I dated a girl for three years when I was in high school. On uh, and off, though. Uh, yeah, but it was it started in middle school and then it kind of ended in high school, my sophomore year, and then I used my junior year to rediscover pussy. Mm. Uh, that's a, <laughs> I, that's a way to say it. Yeah, okay. I, I used my junior, my junior and and senior year to like. Discover other relationships, basically, and like there's more than just being tied down to one person, all that kind of stuff, right? So, uh, fresh out of high school, dating this girl, uh, and she lived probably without exaggeration like two minutes from my house, so we'll constantly go to each other's house. Uh, the problem with my house is that there's a lot of like nosy people around my house. So when she will walk in, they'll just tell her dad. Uh, so my front door neighbor was an old man. Do you remember the the yeah, one? Yeah, he guy? always sat on the porch. Yeah, and, and just he, watched. Yeah, he was a fucking narc. <laughs> he was a security camera. That's yeah, full time job. And then my neighbor's next door, uh, my neighbor's next door, uh, the girl had a fat ass, like Kylie Jenner's fat ass, and I didn't want her seeing me with another girl in case <laughs> that I can slither my way into you know her pants. So, uh, I didn't want to bring, you know, Emily, we'll call this girl Emily, into my house. So, I will have to go to her house. However, her dad didn't like me because her dad knew. Her dad went to the church that I used to attend. And he always saw me bring in different girls and, like, drama that I had because I dated a girl for a long time, about seven months. Mm -hmm. And, like, all this bullshit, right? So, he already knew that I'm, like, I'm just not a suitable choice for his daughter. So one day I'm, you know, um, Emily. I have to come through her window to go in through the back window. Her room was in the back. Uh, you know, I'm uh, laying down the pipes, and then we hear the front door. So she's naked from chest, like she's just fucking naked completely. There's no clothes, right? Uh, I ran to the closet. I hid in the closet. 
I'm literally sitting there, wiener out, touching the cold wall. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm in the closet. My wiener's fully erect, touching the wall of the, the closet, which was very cold, mm-hmm. right? Uh, she's naked from the neck down, titties out, spread open eagle. There's a wet spot on the on the on the bed. She grabs her sheets, covers her chest, and her mom walks in. And she's like, "Oh, um, Emily, we're ordering Jimmy John's. What do you want?" And she's like, "Oh, just anything." So, do you want the turkey tom? So, yeah, I'll, I'll take the yeah turkey tom. It's good, 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 good. So, do you want mayo on it? It's like, yeah, mayo's fine. And any anything else? Like, just whatever you think I like, mom. Whatever you think. Like, she's trying to get her to leave the room because <laughs> you know she's naked. Yeah. And her mom sits on the bed and starts asking for these Jimmy John orders, right? And she's like, all right, do you want a slim or do you want to just whatever? I don't like she's literally (laughs) like saying, I don't give a fuck, right? But she's trying to be nice about it. So she doesn't seem suspicious. Now, granted, she's naked from the neck down, right? I'm hiding in the closet. And then she walks, as she's walking, it's like, all right, I will put that order. And she literally walks out. She goes to walk away. And then she opens the closet door, goes like, "Uh, hey, John, what do you want? No, she doesn't open the closet door. She stops by the closet door. She's like, uh, John, what do you want to eat? And it gets really quiet. And I open the door go like, um, I'll take the turkey tom with some light mayo and some oregano in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny that she knew you were there. She probably saw your clothes on the floor. Yeah. <clears throat> no, no. She said she knew. Because uh, you can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're upstairs and it's Florida, right? And remember how, like, when you live in Florida and you live in a two-story building and it's wood? Yeah. Because of the heat, like, the wood kind of, like, ex- it, like shrinks a little bit. Yeah. Or whatever. I actually don't know what the fuck it is. But every house I ever live in that's two-story, the floor's like, ear, 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 when you're walking. Yeah. So, um, the girl I was dating, which we're calling Emily, uh, her bed was very squeaky naturally. But she had a Hawaiian-sized bed, I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. It's when you have, or a royalty size. it's when you have two king, put king together. beds put together. And then they were put together, and they were pressed with the frame. Mm. And then, like, all you hear was like, from the first squeaking. So she knew. She's like, yeah, either my daughter's flicking the bean, or she has a dude up there. Yeah. And uh, so I hit in the closet. She came out. She's like, so, John, what do you want? And, like, th- there was, like, 10 seconds of silence. And I'm like, I just literally slide my head out, like, yeah, I'll take the turkey tom <laughs> with mayo, a light mayo and oregano, please. Thank you. Some provolone cheese. And then she took my order. Jimmy John got there. And it was really awkward. And her mom told me, it's like, all right, uh, my husband gets off work in two hours. Uh, I'm not going to tell you guys what to do, what not to do. You're both over the age of 18. Uh, you know. Uh, wow, that's a very understanding parent. Yeah, no, she was super cool. She was also super fine. Like, for the longest time, I would try to, like. <laughs> <laughs> this, this really says the type of the type of kid you were. For like... the longest time, to- For the longest time, I'm like. Was your mom like, is that serious with your stepdad? She's like, what are you asking? I'm like, I'm just, I'm just asking. <laughs> She's like, you're, you're fucking disgusting. I'm like, I'm just asking. <laughs> Yo, her mom is so, her and her mom looked fucking identical too. Uh-huh. They were so identical. But her mom was super cool with uh, me laying down the pipe. She's like, yeah, like, you know, again, we're calling this girl Emily. Emily's an adult. You're an adult. I can't tell you guys what to do. My husband, on the other hand, doesn't like you. He can come and swing you. He, she, no, she told me, yeah, he don't like you. He heard stories. Uh, he heard stories from, from church. Uh, you know, you're always... This is a church going mad. You yeah, yeah. Here. I'm over here rearranging here his daughter's doing, guts. <laughs> doing things to his daughter that he don't want to hear about. And basically, um, basically what ended up happening was... So what happened was her dad went to my church, right? Her mom didn't. Her mom was an atheist, but her dad did. Her dad also saw me bring, like, uh, like when I was dating, like, uh, I almost dropped people's names. But I, I, the girl that I dated for three years, he yeah. knew about that relationship. Mm-hmm. And he also knew how that ended. Then the girl that was right after her. And uh, do you remember Big Teddy, Black Hair? Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's sad that I can just describe them. Raven hair, yeah. small titties, brown face. Uh, he knew about uh, lesbian... Her sister was a lesbian. She was super fine. Yeah. Big titty. Okay. Yeah. So he knew about that girl. So he knew about all the girls. Yeah. And then all he the knew... girls he talked to. Yeah. And then he definitely knew about like the raven hair clone. You guys, the... you guys probably hear about some of these girls. Cause, uh... Yeah. 
I think each one of these girls is a <laughs> is a different story. Yeah, yeah. There's like two year increment where all I did was experiment around and date. Like, I, I even if I wasn't attracted to them, mm-hmm. I'll just date them just to see. And then definitely like a short blonde, big titty. Friend. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. he knew about all these girls. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is also the same guy that there was a lock in, and he walked in on me like literally like, like tongue down like one one of. His daughter's best friend <laughs> throw. So like he knew he heard about me and it was one of those things where like he just hated me and he judged me based on what he was seeing in church. Which I think it was not who I was. It's who I thought I was. No, that's, not... that's who you that's who you were. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not. No, hold on, hold on. You you can't sit here and say that's not who I was because you're constantly getting with different women. At the time, that's who you were. That, that's what you were doing. Okay, for like so everything he was just like judging you would be judging you would be saying that you're a bad kid with no evidence, but he physically had like you said he walked in on you making out with his daughter's best friend, and now you're with the daughter, yeah, but that was like I didn't cheat on this girl, like I didn't cheat on Emily, I was done with all my thoughtery, <laughs> okay. So basically, he didn't see that you were. Can trying I say? To can I say? Down. Can I say names really quick and you censor it out? Uh, don't, can we? Don't, don't say names. I know who you're talking about. Okay, I know who you're talking so about. So after, so before I dated Emily, I dated the redhead. Yeah, four times. Uh huh. I dated Raven Hair mm-hmm. once, but we had sex a lot. Uh, I dated Short Brand. Yeah. Right. Uh, I dated uh lesbian sister. Right. Uh, big titty goth girl. You know who that is? Uh, big titty goth girl's sister. <laughs> right? Yes. And then I dated, uh, Peaches. Right? Yeah. So those, these are all girls that I dated, uh, before I got to Emily. But when I got to Emily, I stopped all my thoughtery. I was done. I was not, I was exclusive to one. Mm-hmm. So like, how is he going to judge me? Because he don't know that. Yes, because he's not giving me the chance to fucking show him that I'm only piping down one girl. <laughs> I think the the issue here is what you were doing to the one girl who just happened to be his daughter. Okay, I, clearly he wasn't as lenient as the mom. All right, clearly you know Emily's mom. Clearly, you know she had some little thoughtery back in her day too. Is she okay with it? While the dad was seemed like a very nice church going man. You know, probably settled out with one girl. You know, he's very exclusive. So clearly he had two different type of parenting here. But to judge me based on what he's seen or heard of me, <laughs> that's, what, that's literally why you judge people. No, because that he, is... ne- he never came to me and said, hello, John, uh, how are you? Are you doing good? Oh, how's this? You know, like none of that ever happened. It was always like, stay away. Like he literally came to church one day. And he's like, stay away from my daughter. And like his finger hit my chest and like, at the time, I was dating another girl because, like, the last girl I dated before <laughs> Emily, the last girl I was dating before Emily was very confused. Like, who's this daughter? Like, I don't know why he's talking. I think he's confusing me with somebody else because <laughs> I was talking to Emily while I was dating this girl. Okay. And uh, he came to me, and I told, I literally said, like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. And, like, I grabbed my girl's arm like this. I was like, I, like, grabbed her hand, and I was like, yeah, this is my girlfriend. I, I think you're confusing me for somebody else. <laughs> that just made it worse. <laughs> I'm 100% that probably made him more mad because he know that you're talking to his daughter. Yeah. Man, I don't know. I couldn't do it. If I have kids, man, I, I wouldn't want a daughter. I'll do it with a son. I, w- I want both. I wouldn't want a daughter. I want both. I'll take both. I, don't I think because like, I've seen these guys. like I wouldn't want my daughter to be with somebody that was like you in high school. Oh, my okay? God. Because I'm going to come in swinging, all right? If, if my daughter brings home a guy who was like, anything like you were in high school, we're going to have an issue. So I remember that. So I remember that. Uh, so what I ended up peeking out of this is that he was very protective of Emily, mm-hmm. even though Emily was an adult, right? He would go. Now this her wasn't phone. the one that was like a police officer. No. Okay. No, that's <laughs> that's a different. <laughs> that's a different girl. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That that almost that almost ended horribly. Um, okay. But no. Uh, he was very. He would grab her like electronics, go through them, cyber stalk her. Uh, if she went on a date, he'll literally like want to know. Who, when, where, meet the parents, even though it's like just like a simple date. Like me and her first date, he was so against it that he actually grounded her. But she's an adult, 
And then he tried doing the whole, like, Yo, if you're living under my house, you can follow my fucking rules. So I told her, like, yeah, like, what's stopping you from leaving? Just fucking leave. <laughs> this right here, role model of the year right here. <laughs> I was like, did he lock the front door? Uh, which was the problem that I had with my mom. Every time my mom's like, you're grounded, I'm like, okay, did somebody, like, lock the door? Is there, like, two by fours locking the door from that? Oh, I can just open the door and leave. What are you going to do, beat my ass when I come back? Yeah, I just... So, with her, I told her, like, okay, what's he going to do, kick you out? He loves you. What's he going to do, kick you out? Wow. So she went on that date anyways. <laughs> and that pissed them off because... They, you guys actually started dating. <laughs> not only that, but she's never been defiant to him. The problem here is that he didn't like how defiant she became. But the real problem is, is that he's a control freak. So, yeah, so... So I, 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 I'm actually the hero here because no, I liberated. No, no, yeah, no, no, I no. liberated this girl. Don't let him say that because no. he did the same thing to me as a child. And my mother did not like him for the same reason because I never defied my mom until I met John. Ever. Until this day, my mom does not like him because of the same exact reason. You, you go into people's lives, man. You make them little rebels. You do. Here's the thing, bro. I liberated Emily. I liberated <laughs> you. Okay. From this clutch control that your parents had. Right? I introduced her to so many new things that she didn't know. That she probably wasn't supposed to be introduced to. Okay, but she was an adult. So why <laughs> why does it matter what she was introduced to or not? Uh, I guess it's true. When you're 18, you're 18. Yeah. So. So, anyways. He I, I think that's the problem is that I know a lot of parents do try to shelter their children. Yeah. And sheltering your child is probably one of the worst things you can do yeah. because when they learn about it later in life, they usually learn about it the wrong way. Yeah. And uh, if you, like, for example, like, if you, if you don't teach your child about sex, yeah. they're going to learn about it in high school. They're going to learn about it in school. They're going to let, if it's a girl, some guy's going to manipulate or swindle his way yeah. in, take uh, advantage of her, break yeah. her heart. 100%. Uh, yeah. If it's a guy, uh, he's probably going to get somebody pregnant because he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. So, like, it's way better just to teach your child than to try and hold them off from it as long as possible, and then they have to figure it out themselves. A hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with you on that statement right there. But the thing is, is that uh, what ended up breaking me and this girl was that she was going to go to college in a different state, mm -hmm. and she actually asked me to move in with her, but I didn't want to do that because I had too much, like... Uh, I had too much to lose if I took the move, so we just mutually decided to break okay. up. Uh, we're actually still friends. We're good friends. Mm -hmm. um, we're good friends. She was a cool person. Uh, she's a, uh, she actually watches this podcast, so <laughs> it's going to be awkward. Yeah, it's uh, probably going to be awkward. Yeah, but anyways, uh, <clears throat> yeah, that's the that's the story that you like. I know you like that story a lot. <laughs> yeah, that, that story's funny to me, man. <laughs> I, I, I do enjoy that story. All right, do you have anything... Uh, let's see. I know that, uh, there's something that I wanted to talk about, but, um... There's something that happened to me? Yeah, yeah, that we talked about it before we started the podcast, so... What? I think I tech right now. Oh, uh, yeah. So, apparently, <laughs> uh, do you want to give them the backstory of why we're telling this, uh... So, we're telling this specific story. <clears throat> so, on one of the previous episodes of the podcast, uh, one of our fans, Axel, went into the comment section. He said he wanted to hear a story about a teacher, which, which you do have. Uh, a story about um, ripping ass. And then the third story, I can't remember what it is, but it didn't match any of my stories that I have that actually happened. So, yeah. So I guess if we're going to talk about ripping ass, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the way you want to word it. So, um, first of all, guys, Game of Water didn't happen overnight, all right? Game of Water is definitely a process, and we're still actually through the process of yeah. growing this company. Like, Game of Water is a startup, yeah. essentially. And um, Princeton and I used to work at a startup incubator uh, accelerator together. Accelerator as well. Accelerator, startup accelerator. And uh, so we we always attended like uh, business meetings, and they had these meetups where people would come in and talk about their companies and basically networking events, right? Yeah. And we were at a network event one day, and um, all the bathrooms were taken. You know, I, I didn't say anything. I just I tried casually going to the bathroom. It was taken. I, Start going like 10 minutes later, it was taken because they always provide food and drinks. 
Yeah, they always did. And, and uh, wine. And wine. Yeah, they provided wine. So I'd, I'd go in there. I'd uh, eat my fill of food and uh, try going to the bathroom. I couldn't. And, uh, you know, I went to fart and uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I trusted something I shouldn't have. Let's just <laughs> Let's just say that. So, like, the funny part is, is that, like, I basically sharded, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the older promoter and boss of Game of... My boss just admitted, right, on the number one podcast on Anchor, iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, that he just shit himself. Yes. Uh, yeah, I, I sharded. And uh, it, was, it, was, it was funny because um, I texted John here. <laughs> and I was like, hey, I sharded. And I said, and I said, no, you said, hey, he put, hey, I shit myself, exclamation mark. <laughs> I'm in another room. I'm in the He's other. He's in a different, like, this is a big building, okay? A big building. And so, like, there's people everywhere talking and networking and communicating Talk with about each other. business and, like, you know, yeah. stuff like that. And he texts me, hey, I shit myself, exclamation mark. And I was like, who scared you? Like, what happened? And he's like, no, 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 like. I actually shit myself, like, there's shit in my pants. And I love it because, like, I didn't get a response for, like, a good, I want to say about five minutes. And the, and the next message I got was just, why? Because <laughs> I didn't know. <laughs> so, I'm, by the way, I'm doing a presentation, right? And I was always told not to bring your phone to a presentation, but I did. Yeah. So, I'm doing a presentation. There's the projector, and I have the little, what's it called? The little uh, remote. Clicker, the I little guess. clicker to switch for slides. My phone is on the podium, and I'm doing, like, a little presentation, and I look down, and it just says, I shit myself. <laughs> and completely ruined my entire fucking presentation, right? Yeah. So, uh... I was just in disbelief, man. <laughs> but why it takes me? Like, what? I needed to tell somebody. Like, in that situation, what do you do? The bathrooms are full. <laughs> There's people everywhere. You can't go anywhere. It's an office building, so it's not like you can go hide somewhere. <laughs> Like, what do you do? What do you do in that situation? Other than text your friend, and maybe they can help you out. <laughs> and then, like, I had to finish my presentation, and I was like, any questions? And as people were doing questions, that's why I well, why? <laughs> but you ruined my entire presentation. I was doing so good. So, basically, we are working for a company, and we were trying to get money for, like, this project that we are doing. And I'm in the middle. I'm in the front of three angel investors. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm I'm sitting across from three angel investors. One of them, who's probably one of the most important people to ever walk through that pace, place, that guy's oozes millions of dollars. Yeah, that we 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 met some people that were very heavy into business. And, yeah, uh, and this dumbass decides to dollars. text me. I shit myself <laughs> while I'm in front of these super professional like angel investors, and I'm like, what? And like completely. Like I look at the text message and then I look up and all the slides I swear to God were like in gibberish. Like I couldn't focus. You threw my focus off in mm-hmm. this during this. Yep, uh, I definitely threw my own focus off too because you know, <laughs> like I said, man. You, Did some... you go back and do work? Huh? Did you go back and do I work? stood by. I stood outside the bathroom. To do what? To to clean. <laughs> <laughs> to clean up the mess. <laughs> There's no mess to clean, like bro. You gotta throw yourself away. <laughs> Yeah, but we didn't go home for like a good. We were there all day. Yeah. That was an all day event, so like we couldn't. So leave. like, how many hours in did you shit yourself? So we were there for sixteen hours a day. Yeah, we were there for yeah. it were a long day. So at which hour did you shut yourself? Like uh, the four probably, hour mark. Like, or... Probably like the six hour mark. Holy shit! Yeah, we had. So you still uh, had like like. Yeah, we had like if this was if this was a job, I still had like a whole eight hour shift to go. All right, let's just let's just say that. So you're walking around with like. Nah, I threw I threw my underwear away. <laughs> So can you mention the janitor? <laughs> he cleaning the bathroom. He's like, oh, what the hell? He's like, yo, what fucking Chernobyl in the house. <laughs> it's like, yo, who nuked North Korea? <laughs> yep, so uh, that changed my life. Uh, that was uh, that was one of those moments. I think I learned more from that moment than uh, I have in a lot of other moments in my life. And I learned that when you got to go, you got to go. You got to go. Don't, tr- don't try to hold it in. Don't try to be a hero. <laughs> Don't try to trust the fart. I know some some people like to do that. Not me. Not me. When I feel it, I go. So with me, what do I do every day at 3.30? Yeah, you go and take your afternoon dump. Yep. So uh, basically, 
uh, I didn't know I was lactose intolerant growing up. Uh, I just knew that if I ate cheese, like, my poops were, like, it would be kind of like an air cannon shooting, like, a rock. It was just, <laughs> right? So I've, I've always been poop shy. If, if there's somebody, like, I can't poop in public, you know, this, I will hold it in. I will feel my entire insides with turds. <laughs> I will get turd poisoning if it's a thing. That's a. I don't think that's a thing. Instead of going to the bathroom, I will fucking defecate myself before pooping in public. Right. Mm-hmm. So uh, this happened about seven, seven, six years ago. I want to say, but uh, so uh, anyways, I found out I was lactose intolerant. Right. My whole life, I always noticed that my bowel movements were very odd. Some days they're normal, and some days it's like. Somebody turned on an AK-47, right? <laughs> so uh, I went to the Cheesecake Factory with... Oh, this happened in Minnesota. Uh, I went to a Cheesecake Factory with a friend. And, well, no, this this LA or South... I don't know. I can't remember what this was. Uh, all I know is that it was like a little bit over seven years ago. And uh, I went to a Cheesecake Factory with a, with a co-worker. Yeah, it was a coworker, right? And she was paying. <clears throat> so, you know, I got a little bougie and started, you know, ordering, like, the expensive stuff. And she got a dessert. She orders the dessert. And she goes, like, ah, shit, I gotta go. Right? And she, like, she paid the check. She left. And she left this fucking platter of paradise in front of me. So I eat it. I'm riding the bus home. And my stomach goes, it's always the worst sound. That's right the there. worst sound in the world. It's the worst feeling. I like I instantly did this number where I'm like I touch my face. I'm like, <laughs> so I'm looking around to like in the, I'm looking around. There's nobody on the bus but the bus driver, and then I was like, I gotta rip ass. Because if I don't rip ass, I can't make it home. <laughs> right. So right when I went to uh, rip ass, the doors go. <laughs> people come in. I'm like. So I start sweating. I go home. I'm power walking home. <laughs> I probably look like a fucking psycho because <laughs> I lived in a I lived in a uh, apartment complex. Yeah, and I lived in the what I believe to be the third or fourth story. I literally power walked. I was like this. Did you do the thing where you got to your door and like you're fumbling with the keys? Have you ever done that where you really gotta go and you go to unlock your door? So and, like... I lived in an apartment complex where the doors were open. Like oh. you, you pull them. Oh, okay. The problem I had is that there's somebody moving furniture. Oh, and I was like, are you fucking serious? So I ran to the other side of the building, but the stairs are on the complete opposite. So this building shaped like a like a U. Oh, so you have to go all the way around. So I had to go all the way around, and I'm going up there. And, like, you guys know when you have to use the bathroom, and, like, the closer you get to the toilet, like... The more you have to go. The more you have to go. I also had music on. I'm like, ugh. ugh. Like, I can't <laughs> listen to the music right now because it's making it worse. I go there. I sit on the toilet, and it's just like a little... That's it. That's it? That's it. I was so fucking mad. <laughs> I looked down. There's not even anything. Really? Yeah. I like In my heart, I was like, my dude, I'm about to drop a fucking ballistic goddamn missile of turd. And I looked down. And it's like the size of a fucking, like, I don't know, like a peach. You know what happened? What? You condensed everything because you held it in <laughs> for so long. <laughs> I compact everything. Yeah, you... <laughs> <laughs> but I like, uh. That was bad because, like, I remember walking like a fucking cycle like this. But that's the thing, though. Is you, that's I'm why like, I say I'm doing, it. like, the Burton Ernie walk. Where, like, they're in Sesame Street and they do this. <laughs> it was so bad. And then I fucking hated myself that day because I'm, like, I left work early. Or not. I left work early. I was supposed to enjoy my day in downtown Minneapolis. And then now, like, this shit struck. So I had to go home. That's the problem with not being able to use the public bathroom. I can't. You just I went can't, to the bathroom in the restaurant. I can't. I, I have somebody that I know, I'm not going to say who, but we were shooting Game of Honor, and we're talking in the bathroom, and I walked in to wash my hands, he goes into the stall, and I hear a bell, I'm like, why is he still talking to me? <laughs> like, like to me, like, when you're in the bathroom, and you're doing, like, you're taking a shit, like, that's you No, time. trust me, it, it's not. No, you know how many people walk in on me when I'm in the bathroom? Yeah, no. To ask me questions? All the time. <laughs> yeah, so this guy, I hear the bell going, like, clink, Cling, cling, cling. And he's like, yeah. And like, he's still talking to me. And I'm washing my hands. Like, why is he still talking to me, bro? Finish. And he's like, yeah, you know, I like the game. And like, the thing with Pokemon is that I'm like, 
<laughs> Why is Admiral hiring people? <laughs> if you t- look, listen, if you're in a bathroom stall and you're talking to somebody else, you're probably a sociopath. You, I'm, I'm just fucking. I'm just gonna fucking go ahead. Hey, man, you probably kill care. people. Some people don't care. Can you do that? Can you talk to people while you're pooping? No. It's weird, ain't I it? I can't. I can use public bathrooms, but oh, I'm not I gonna can't. sit there and have a conversation with people. That's fucking weird. Yes, that is very weird. I, I kind of want to know who that is in Game of Honor, but I also don't. <laughs> don't don't tell me. I'll tell you after the video. No, I don't want to know. I don't want to know. I don't want to look at them any differently. I don't want to judge them. <laughs> um. Yeah. Uh, I guess we can close around here for the first video edition of uh, the podcast. Livestock podcast. Yep. The Livestock podcast. Oh, you should do a clear voice for this. <clears throat> well, everybody, I hope that you enjoyed this here Life Sucks podcast. Uh, be sure to follow us on YouTube for any of you out there that are listening to the audio version of this uh this here podcast. You can uh, watch us on on the YouTube. How about that? That was that was pretty good, Cletus. Uh <laughs> <laughs> I forgot you're that Cletus. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you so much for watching or hearing us. Uh, next week we'll have uh, Skulls back on here. Uh, with this quarantine, I was already at Admiral's place, so it was just beneficial for us to do a podcast here. Yep. Uh, next week we'll have at, uh, we'll have Skulls back at it, and we're gonna bring you more podcasts. Uh, if you guys want to hear a topic, write it below. Um, what you want to hear, uh, what kind of story you want to hear. If we have a story on, on you know, school, if you want to hear more about school or work or just like anything like that. Uh, and yeah, see you guys next uh, next week, next episode. See you guys. Peace.